give us a sense of, of the work that was involved in order to do this. Well, first of all, I think you have to give props uh, to the congressional delegation, leave me aside for a minute, uh, but just the entire delegation. Um, when it became apparent <clears throat> that there was going to be uh, a change of location for the foreign military sales component of this F-35 platform, then, uh, you know, Singapore was in the, you know, in the, it was this, the primary driver early on of what was going on because Singapore already had an F-16 squadron in America and their pilots were going to train on the F-35 and they wanted them co-located. So when th that knowledge was uh, made known and then the big Air Force, active duty Air Force, decided to find another location because Luke couldn't handle the mission, then a couple of years ago, it became apparent to the delegation that there was going to be this opportunity somewhere in America to host this all-important mission. And we knew we were one of the five sites that was under consideration. So when it became known that Fort Smith was going to join four other cities in this process, that's when the congressional delegation went to work on it. So I have to credit Senators Cotton and Bozeman and the rest of the House delegation, myself included. We, we began using every tool we had in our toolbox and every point of leverage we had with our positions on relevant committees to make the strongest possible case we could that Fort Smith should be seriously considered. And to the Air Force's credit, you know, they through their due diligence, they did, uh, in my opinion, made the right choice. So let's just, first of all, say the congressional delegation was in on it early and did a lot of things behind the scenes to help, um, shall we say, grease the skids to make sure that Fort Smith was given the utmost of consideration. But there's, it's a deliberate process, Darren, and Air Force has to go through the due diligence, study the sites, do all the comparative data, and some of those things include what's existing there now, what kind of airspace do they have, how many available days of training weather-wise do they have, all of those things are considered in the process. And so some time ago, they made the decision that Fort Smith was the preferred site, but that wasn't the final answer. And we had to go through the environmental impacts study. That EIS took several months, and there were site visits that happened and then we've all been waiting for what we call the ROD, the record of decision, and that came late last week. So it was a long process, props to the congressional delegation, props to the Chamber of Commerce in the city of Fort Smith, Mayor McGill and his team, Tim Allen, his team. Uh, in fact, there are way too many people to thank for their role in this. And, and, and I mean, that will reserve some of those uh, kudos to another day, but it was a team effort. That's just how I describe it. It was just a team effort to make sure that Fort Smith was considered, Fort Smith was seriously considered, and Fort Smith became the, the uh, preferred site, and uh, the record of decision validated all that. So it was a, it, it was a long uh, but very worthwhile process. Doesn't it make sense, though, that the 188 is perfect for this? Well, I think it it was a perfect scenario for us, uh, and I think the delegation made a really good case with the Air Force and the relevant parties that it was an ideal location, centrally located, great airspace. I mean, we most of the people that will watch this visit don't understand just how lucky we are to have the operational airspace in Arkansas the way we do, and that's a credit to us, a big benefit to us. The available days for training weather-wise was well over 300, so that made a, a huge difference. But but there was also that um, kind of hard to kind of quantify uh, the spirit of Fort Smith is how I label it. The fact that everybody in Big Air Force knew that Fort Smith loved having man flying missions coming in and out of its airport. So we had the space available. We had force structure already there with the RPA program. 
And we had this tremendous community support to go with all of the other contributing factors that just made us an ideal location. So I think Fort Smith was ideal. And we were um, shamelessly sharing our feelings with uh, the decision makers from the secretary on down. So there was no question what it had universal support from the community, universal support from the congressional delegation. And I think a lot of that, everything working together made this all possible. You know, we've done stories trying to quantify the economic impact of this. Um, it can you can it be quantified on on what what this is going to mean not only for Fort Smith but for the River Valley? Hard to quantify. Uh, people have thrown around the billion dollar number. I nobody really knows what it is, but suffice it to say that to have an enduring mission at Fort Smith is what any community would be, you know, just coveting. And, and Fort Smith uh, has had Air Force, stru Force structure out there for a long, long time, man flying missions. So, you know, I go back to 2011, we, we were losing the A-10s uh, and we traded the A-10s for an RPA mission, which kept 188 flag flying out there, though it wasn't a man flying mission. And we knew at the time that there would come a point in time when Fort Smith would be ideally suited for another Air Force mission. And lo and behold, here in you know the early 2020s, uh, it makes itself available. So we're taking advantage of that opportunity. But to quantify it, look, it's going to be people, it's going to be jobs, it's going to be payroll, it's going to be support, uh, the entire economic development gamut. Uh, there will be uh, small businesses that will be created as a result of it. So, you know, maybe Tim Allen could quantify it. I really can't. Uh, all I can tell you is uh, we want a mission like this because of what it brings uh, to the economic vitality of the Arkansas River Valley, to the third district, Mark, to our state. And then, you know, as important to me is the national security implications of having foreign military, you know, people that are friendly to us that are buying our equipment, being trained by our people to a standard uh, that is higher than any standard in the world, that the national security implications are just off the chart. So for all of those reasons, this is a great um, once in a generation, uh, great news for Fort Smith and the Arkansas River Valley. All right, before I let you go, I want to, this picture you took uh, while you were in uh, in Seoul, South Korea. First, what, what, the, the the visit there was to do what? Well, we Darren, we uh, I joined five other defense appropriators, five Republicans, one Democrat, bipartisan group that traveled uh, to the Indo-Pacific region for the express purpose of doing uh, a, a thorough analysis of the of the threat, if you will, of mainly China, uh, but the threat posture that's going on in the Indo-Pacific, as you know, we've pivoted in our na national military strategy uh, to what's going on uh, in the South China Sea, East China Sea, and that whole Indo-Pacific region. So I joined five other members and we traveled uh, mainly to look at the national security implications, what's going on over there, and also the economic uh, implications of what's happening in that region, because that goes straight to the heart of national security and, and world security for that matter. So we started in Tokyo, in Japan, and we uh, spent some time on uh, the mainland of Japan, and then uh, took a trip down to Okinawa and spent quite a bit of time at Okinawa looking at the different uh, uh, military bases and some of the changes that are happening down there. You know, we're moving 9,000 Marines out of Okinawa and gonna move them some to Hawaii, some to Guam. So we put that under the microscope pretty carefully. And then we flew into uh, Taipei, Taiwan, and spent a day and a half uh, with the relevant organizations in Taiwan. The American Institute for Taiwan is our equivalent of an embassy. Uh, but also spent uh, some time with, you know, other uh, Taiwanese uh, agencies, Minister of Defense, Foreign Affairs, even the president of Taiwan. We had a kind of a grip and grin with her. And then uh, finished in Seoul, South Korea, spent a day and a half there and 
yesterday up on the DMZ, uh, which was revealing to me. I'd never been there before, but that was, uh, uh, you know, a high point of the visit and then flew back to America. So it was a uh, several day trip, uh, defense appropriators uh, with a national security mission. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I got to tell you, every time I travel and I get a chance to do this a lot, I always make notes of who I run into that have connections back to Arkansas. Yeah, lo and behold. And, <laughs> and, and so uh, I think you have the picture. Uh, you know, I got a chance to go on the USS Ronald Reagan, part of the 7th Fleet uh, there in Japan, and had lunch with a, a young man named Joshua Owens. Joshua is a Southside product, and uh, he's an aviation ordnance technician aboard the USS Ronald Reagan. Parents are Chastity and Christopher Cox. And, uh, you know, he's an E-5. AO2 is his rank, E-5. And just a delightful young man, very smart kid, doing very important work aboard a very important platform. He did tell me, and I want to give a shout out to Jason Bouget, who is the speech and debate coach at Southside. He said he owes a lot of his success to the fact that Mr. Bouget uh, took this young kid in high school and kind of channeled him in a direction. And, and so he gives, uh, he gives Jason a lot of that credit. Uh, and then... Uh, Brigadier General David Eaglin, who is commander of the 18th Wing in Okinawa at uh, Kadena, and uh, he's a West Memphis graduate, uh, Brigadier General, commanding the largest combat Air Force fleet in the United States arsenal. Uh, and, you know, and then Kyle Markram, here's a kid from basically Sylvan Hill, Sherwood, Arkansas, went to the Arkansas School for Math and Sciences. Now I'm dating myself, Darren. <laughs> But Kyle is a chief of liaison services with the American Institute of Taiwan. And when we shook hands, he said, you may not remember me, but you were my instructor when you were on the staff at the University of Arkansas back when he was a kid, back when he was a cadet in the ROTC program. So now he's a full colonel doing remarkable work with the American Institute of Taiwan. So it's always refreshing to run into people with Arkansas ties as I travel the globe. Yeah, that's amazing. And then you were telling me about um, a, a, another a graduate, I think, of Southside that's that has now been accepted to uh, it, it, help me out with this, to accepted to, to another military branch. Yeah, well, there's so many things to say about Madison Marsh and we don't have time here. But let me just tell you, she'll graduate in June from the U.S. Air Force Academy. Uh, she is a brilliant young lady and uh, in was lat, in her junior year was named a Truman Scholar. Elon Musk presented her the space scholarship. So she's scholarly in, uh, with, with, I mean, she's a lot smarter than the two of us combined. But, and, and she's received a notification from the Air Force that she's going to be a pilot. So that puts her in rare air. Uh, but most recently, she's been accepted for her graduate studies at Harvard, at the Kennedy School for Public Service. So uh, just a remarkable young lady with a tremendous upside. And uh, I've worked with Madison since her senior year, actually junior year in high school. And now to see her on the cusp of becoming a lieutenant in the Air Force, going to Harvard, uh, just a remarkable success story there of a young lady. And she thanked me for all the work I'd helped her with. And I, as I told her in my text message, I said, you've earned every bit of this on your own. But it's a joy to be part of the progress of young people coming out of the valley. You know, that's interesting that that part of your job not only is to deal with what's happening, obviously, in Washington, D.C., but but to make contact with these 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 bright stars, basically, out of out of Fort Smith Public Schools. I mean, that's just amazing. That to me is something that that you don't mm -hmm. think of when you when you talk about a congressman or a congresswoman, the, the, the help that you all provide. Darren, we are judged uh, by a lot of people based on votes that we take in our voting record. But there's so much more to being a U.S. representative. Uh, let's not forget the constituent service piece that every day I have a highly competent staff working issues for residents across uh, the entire third district and beyond in some cases, solving everyday problems. Let's not forget the, the challenge the gentleman had in Fort Smith, who's, I think it was his brother that had gone down in an aircraft uh, 
a long, long time ago in Germany, or was it Austria, I guess, and, and was having a hard time, you know, finding his remains. And, and our staff worked on that. Those are things that people forget about. But back to the point, a U.S. representative is, uh, should be judged, I think, on the kind of the, the totality of the work that they do. And constituent service is very important to us, and we do this on an everyday basis. But also things like recruiting young men and women out of our high schools to go to our service academies. And I tell them, I'm selfish about it. We have the best military on the planet. I want them led by the very best people. And that means people in the Valley and people in Northwest Arkansas that have a predisposition to serving as military leaders. It's my job to make sure that we match their ambitions with the opportunities that exist out there. So that's important. And then, uh, you know, just to, to be able to work with our partners and trying to bring things like the, the FMS mission to Fort Smith, Arkansas. Uh, these are all things that I think um, don't necessarily show up in the box score, but they should. Uh, and it's, uh, these are the kinds of events that I live for and, um, and keeps me motivated on an everyday basis.